Thanks, kid. Yes. Mitchell. Let me see. You still have that thing? I still got it. <laughs> Did you know that uh, when your dad and I were kids, we had our own forest? Your own forest? Yeah, right in our own backyard. I mean, it was probably the most magnificent trees you'd ever seen. Uh, they weren't even like trees, they were like mysterious giants watching over us. Uh, it was an entrance to a whole other world. A world I was way too scared to venture in by myself, you know, but your dad, he was different. You know, he saw it differently. To him, those woods, they were like our own playland. They were made just for us. One day he comes to me and he hands me a backpack and points to the woods and says, are you ready? And you said? I said, you're damn right I'm ready. Mm. Right, confession. Yes. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was scared to death. <laughs> Don't laugh. You know, some people, they learn bravery. That's me. Other people, they're born brave. That's your dad. You know, back then I would follow him anywhere. I was like his little puppy, like a, like a shadow. Wherever he was, I was right there. And one day we're taking a long walk in the woods. I mean, we're deep in the woods and he would take me so far out there, you know. And we come to this unknown trail. He had never seen it, I had never seen it, and boom! <laughs> Listen to me. Damn, you scared me. He takes off running. Takes off running down this trail. And of course, there I am right behind him. Finally catch up to him. I'm completely out of breath. And he looks at me with that grin. And he says, what do you think? I said, what do I think about what? And he just pointed up. Well? Well, it was breathtaking. It was the most incredibly elaborate Treehouse. Treehouse? I mean like something out of the Swiss Family Robinson, you know? <laughs> I don't know how it got there and I didn't even ask. You know, I was just following your dad. We were up there for hours. We had a ball, you know? He read this book, uh, The Flight of the... the... Flight to the Mushroom Planet. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he read the whole thing. Anyway, it was starting to get dark and I told your dad we should probably head back, and he said, nope, God's got one more present for us. And like a magician, he pulls this rope lever and rolls back the roof of this treehouse. And there it was, the biggest moon and the brightest stars I had ever seen. And he said, one day, we're gonna sit up there and pitch pennies into the Atlantic Ocean. Huh? Sound like your old man? Mm, sounds like him. <laughs> then what? Then we headed home, and uh, I got an asthma attack and couldn't breathe and uh, blacked out. <laughs> and I ended up waking up in a hospital room, and it turned out that your dad carried me the entire way. Two miles. Don't know how he did it, but he did it. And that was the first time your dad saved my life. Stand up. I miss those old stories. Oh, I miss telling them. Oh my God, this is so cool. What's Paragusta Adagusta? Lucy, I know right now your heart and your soul are weary, but Adagusta, Father Time doesn't have to work against you. He's with you. And he'll replenish your heart. Just like Dad, you always know just what to say to make things better. Well, it's time. Anna Maria? Okay. Logan, you want to get those audio files queued up? Let me know when you're ready. I'm on it, I'm on it.
You ready? You're damn right I am. Okay, so there are two blondes on a mountaintop in Colorado, and one blonde says to the other blonde, which one do you think is furthest, Florida or the moon? And the other blonde turns and says, um, hello, like, can you see Florida? <laughs> Come on, why are you laughing? That's funny. Because I'm trying to figure out how they got up the mountain. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boom, ching. Mitch, we're all good to go. Would you like me to start the audio files now? Yes, sir. Let's all take this journey together, shall we? You all right, sweetheart? Yeah, I think so. Paranagusta, adagusta. Four minutes, 15 seconds. The test supervisor now is informed. Launch vehicle test conductor, Norm Carlson, you are go for launch. From this time down, uh, Carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle begins to build up. We're now hitting the four minute mark. He looks good. He does. Doesn't he? God, I wonder what he's feeling. I don't know what he's feeling. I'm not even sure what he's doing. Doesn't matter what I think. This is his journey. Amen to that. Who picked up the space suit? Not me. Not my department. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about to 10 or 15 seconds from this time. Can I say it? I have a feeling you're going to anyway. Ground control to Major Tom. Come in, Major Tom, can you hear me? Okay, this is for you. This is Major Tom to ground control. I got you loud and clear. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Okay. Here we go. Mitchell, Logan, this has been a blessing. Thank you. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. You're welcome, Tom. It's been a privilege and an honor to know you, truly. It's been a pleasure, Tom. It's been a little weird, but it's been a pleasure. A little weird, huh? <laughs> I know how you really feel, Mitchell. All right. I love you guys. We love you, Tom. Love you, Tom. We just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown. T-minus one minute, 54 seconds. Hey, Kip, what do you think? What do I think about what, old buddy? Look up. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. Sis, I love you. 80 second mark has now been passed. I love you. You are my favorite sister. I'm your only sister. Still my favorite. Amelia, the sweet love of my life. Thank you. Thank you. You, you taught me how to live. I love you, baby. You know what to do. I know. I love you more. T minus 25 seconds. 
princess? Yes, Dad. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wish like me. As a kid, I liked to look up to the sky and dream about what I would be when I grew up. Most people let adulthood erase their earliest hopes into dust. Somewhere along the way, our imagination becomes a ghost and we lose our hope for humanity. And well, I don't recommend that. Life is about more than survival. It's about reaching new frontiers in ourselves and challenging others to do the same. The only greater frontier than space is the human soul. The moment Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, it was a collective call to action that we could no longer sit around and be satisfied with mediocrity. Life is meant to be lived, truly lived. And if a man could walk on the moon, orbit Earth, explore Mars, Jupiter, even a flyby of Pluto, then whatever dream you had in your heart can be made a reality. Failure is part of the process. It's the pathway to success. You only lose by not trying. The thing I have learned is that sometimes our dreams are not big enough and life has other plans in store that are even beyond our imagination. My life did not turn out the way I envisioned it and I am so thankful for the meddling of the universe. The journey was more than I could have hoped for. I took chances, I created, I loved. I lived as though death could not touch me. Whatever you want to do, do it now. For life is time and time is all there is. Thomas Anthony Adora, signing off. Godspeed to you.